Hello everybody, welcome back to Reaper Minis TV. We are going to get right into reviews for this episode and we'll start off with a blister that is very appropriate considering Christmas is right around the corner. This is the Nativity and it's a large blister that comes with four pieces in it. And we'll crack it open here so we can take a look at everything inside. And we got our four pieces we'll dump out here. First we have the archway of the manger itself and you can see the large star that's pointing the way. And then we've got Mary who's kneeling down and you can see that she's kneeling down right at the crib in the still picture. And here we have Joseph. He's carrying a staff in one hand and he's got his cloak on and he's also sort of admiring the baby Jesus in the crib. And then we have as a single piece by itself the reason for the season itself. We have baby Jesus here in a makeshift crib detail on all the figures was really good and clean. Uh, there was cleanup necessary on pretty much every piece here in this set, but no flaws or anything like that. And if there's anything at all that kind of detracts from me from the set is on the, the makeshift crib for baby Jesus. The artist's name and the date are stamped in there. And on pretty much all the other miniatures that you get, you'll have the artist's name, and the date or copyright date of the miniature for Reaper on the bottom of the figure. There's no real place to put that on the crib, so on the top end of each long side of the crib, you have that little stamp. Once it's painted, if you left that on there, in my opinion, it would detract from the overall scene a little bit. So I'm going to putty over that and just smooth it out a little bit and then be ready to paint it. But otherwise, great set here. Obviously of more use in a diorama than any kind of gaming application. And with it being so close to Christmas, maybe you can't pick it up and get it done for this year, but you have plenty of time to get it ready for next Christmas. Continuing on with our Christmas spirit right now, we have a Santa mouseling and a helper. With the helper, you can see that he's checking off the naughty and nice list. It's a little, I guess, Santa elf mouseling that's doing a little bit of legwork for him to see which kids get stuff and which kids get coal. And then you've got Santa that's holding up a gift in his right hand, and he's got a big bag full of toys in his left hand. Um, if you're expanding your collection of mouselings, these would be good to go along with the Thanksgiving ones, just if you've got a progression of holiday mouselings. You've got the Halloween ones, and then the Thanksgiving ones, and now the Christmas ones, and we'll see if we get some maybe Easter ones or other ones for other holidays throughout the year as the line of mouselings expands. Okay, and we'll get into some more gaming-related miniatures, or more directly gaming-related miniatures now. Starting off with Reeve the Pious. He is a holy warrior. This figure comes in two pieces. You get the main figure itself, and then you have as a separate piece his right hand and the entire sword that are cast separately. You can see that Reeve is carrying a dagger on his belt, and he's also not wearing a whole lot of armor that you can see. Whatever armor he is wearing is covered by the heavy cloak and the hood that he's got on. The, the real main focus of the miniature is the giant sword that he's brandishing, ready to weigh into somebody with. But also under the hood, the face is really well detailed. It's kind of sunken in, and not sunken in like skeletal, but sunken in where there's a lot of lines to his face, sort of how it reminds me a little bit of how the Emperor was in the Star Wars movies where you just saw part of his face and it was really sunken in. Well, if you look at it at the right angle, you can see all of Reeve's face, but it has that quality where his cheeks are sunken in and his eyebrows are really prominent. So having him painted up really with a pale skin color, I think would make it stand out and make it look really cool. Next up is a single piece miniature. This is an Astral Reaver Monk. And right off the bat, I think he would make a perfect Githzerai for a D&D. &D. But you could also use him as an assassin or a thief, a more humanoid kind of character, and not necessarily a Gith in a fantasy game. Under his hood, we can see that his face is kind of sunken in, and the nose is more flattened. I could see maybe using him as a half-orc assassin or thief, if you don't want to use him as a gith. But it's a good figure, has good muscle definition that's visible where his tattered cloaks aren't covering him up. You can see his toes are uncovered and aren't wrapped up like the rest of his feet. Uh, overall, a nice sense of kind of skulking motion to him, like he's sneaking down an alley towards somebody or maybe phasing through the astral plane into a dungeon or whatever. But a good figure here. I like it. I think it'll be easy to paint and good addition for a DM's box of monsters. This next blister is going to be added to my 
Vampire Counts Army for Warhammer Fantasy Battles immediately. It is Stefan von Kruger, a vampire, and you can see that he's wearing massive plate mail armor. So this is not your really sit on the throne and dictate how things are going to happen, vampire lord. This is a get in the middle of it and start killing people, vampire. And massive plate armor on him. The figure comes in multiple pieces. You get four different heads to choose from, and then you have the two sword arms that are going to glue into place with a, a little sort of ball and socket joint. You have a little bit of range of motion to where you can rotate the swords a little bit, but not a whole lot. And then, like I said, you have four different heads to choose from with the model. All four of the heads have really crisp detail and they look great. Two of them are just bare, no helmet or anything, and I'll probably use them as a head swap on another model just somewhere down the line. There are two of the heads that have helmets. One of them has a little bit of an open face and some smaller kind of bat wings adorning it on the side, and that one I'm probably going to use on another model too. The one I'm going to put on this figure is the great big full helm that has the really large bat wings on it. It's a fully enclosed helm that has a skull face on the front of it. And I think for me anyway, it just goes with the heavy full plate armor that's really beautifully adorned with some extra skulls here and there and just stylized kind of plates all over it. It just looks awesome and is probably my favorite figure for this batch that we're looking at today. This next figure is a two-piece miniature called a Mocking Beast, and if you're a D&D &D player, you probably recognize it as a Mimic. It's a chest that's actually a monster that's going to come to life or spring to life and attack the party when they go investigate the loot inside. The two pieces glue together back at the backside hinges of the chest, and you can have the, the mouth or the chest mostly open or mostly closed. And however you do it, you'll still get a full view of the gnarly sharp teeth that are on the top and bottom half of it. If you leave it open a bit, you can see a large tongue inside along with a uh, skull and some other treasure. You can see some coins in there. And also on the top side of the lid, there's some warty, gnarled, kind of mutated uh, skin or flesh on the top side there. Now, for me, if I was playing D&D, &D, obviously I'd use it as a mimic, but you could also use it as a Nurgle-infested chest in a game of Warhammer Fantasy roleplay, and I think that's where I'll get the most use out of it. Next up is another large blister. This is the Goroloth drone, and we'll cut open the blister and take a look at all the parts inside. And as we dump it out, you can see we have four different pieces. We've got the main body section here, and you can see it's a large amphibious creature with several fins on each side. The underside is hollow to keep it from being too heavy. And then you have the rear fins that are just a series of three different fins that will go right into place at the back of the model. You have the head of the model with the large tentacles. On the underside, you can see the suction cups there. So real good detail all around. That's going to fit, obviously, at the front of the model. And then you have the dorsal fins that are just going to go on the back, well, top side, or the, on the back of the model. Reaper has also previously released another larger version of this model, just called uh, Goraloth, without the drone part. And it's probably... I don't know, 50 or maybe 100%, maybe twice the size of the one we're looking at here. It's a massive model, and you can see the two compared in this picture here. Here's a painted Goroloth and just a primed Goroloth drone. The drone does come with a flying base or a, a stand for it to sit on, so it looks like it's uh, floating a little bit because it would normally be an aquatic creature. But anyway, back to the Goroloth itself. That one is massive. I'm using it in my Dark Elf army for Warhammer Fantasy Battle as an alternate Hydra, just to have something unique in my army. But either one of these would be great as an Aboleth in D&D. I think they're just marvelous models, but they are going to take a little bit of time to assemble and clean, so just have some patience, set aside a little bit of time to mess with these. You might need a little bit of putty on some of the seams that are left after you assemble it, just to get it all smoothed out and everything. This is not, neither one of these, but the Gorloth drone, because that's the one we're really looking at today. But neither one of these are your basic kind of easy to slap together models that you're just going to be painted and done with in no time flat. 
to get the best possible result out of these. You want to spend a decent amount of time cleaning and assembling and just really painting it up nicely to get a great effect out of this miniature, but it'll look awesome. Alright, thanks for watching Reaper Minis TV. We'll see you next episode.